when we first started shooting all these videos, we had a bunch of new equipment, including a set of microphones that linked to our iPhones off of Amazon. Unfortunately, it took us a week worth of videos to realize that they sporadically cut off, and when they do that, you get no audio to the phone whatsoever. So unfortunately, a lot of these videos here that, in my opinion, are great content, have no audio whatsoever. So I'm going to do my best in this to fill in a little bit as we go along and try to explain what I'm trying to do or what I'm talking about uh, when, I'm, when I'm working on this 59 Impala. save a old uh, well pump. I can't think of the right name for it. I know that's not what it's called. But... What do you see, bud? It's part of the emblem. Oh, yeah? Yeah, oh, that pump is freaking... I-L-I-A-L-A -A. Impala. That's what we thought. We had the thoughts that that was a 59 Impala convertible and uh i'm pretty confident that that's what it is but let's we'll see what you got buddy it's heavy hey, yeah it's cool though all right start us a pile somewhere set that off to the side oh, maybe set it with off. that tricycle that's blended in over there oh okay. we'll see what else we can find <laughs> i know there's going to be some treasures in here but there's probably some flat tires soon to come too It's now day four of cleaning up this mess. We're fixing to start on, it's just Austin and I today. It's Friday. Uh, we're trying to have a relaxed day. Usually Fridays we try to not be so gung-ho at it. And uh, Steven doesn't work because he works at a, um, one of the local drag strips in the evenings. So it's just Austin and I today. And we're going to we're trying to get a load of junk out of here and then take one of the square body home. That's the goal for the day. Um, we've got a late start. Like I said, it's, it's more of a relaxed day, but I don't know how well this is going to go. We've already started trying to dig some of the stuff out of the wash. And Austin just found an Impala emblem on the car that I suspected was a 59 Impala convertible. If you don't have an idea what them cars are bringing, do a quick Google search after the video. and. Um, your mind will probably be blown as to what this car could have been worth. One that was completely rotted in half at auction, and it was a vert, and I kid you not, the car was in two pieces, setting opposite of the way they should be. I'm wanting to say that car brung like $58,000.
So keep that in mind um, as we dig this out with the forks and there's nothing left of it. But had this car been left alone and not pushed in this wash for uh, erosion control, what that thing might have been worth. Uh, right now it's worth about $150 a ton, which is just, you know, I mean, and people don't know what stuff's going to be worth. Nobody can predict the future. I'm sure the stuff we drink every day, there's, there's people that are blown away, you know, we're so stupid in their opinion for junk and for junk, but in the moment, it's got to make economical sense. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we're a business. We have to stay in business and we don't stay in business by hoarding junk, but we're going to see if there's any stainless on this thing at all. Uh, if there is, you know, some of that stuff just brings crazy money. So we'll, we'll do our best to save it and get it back in recirculation. But we'll flip you around real quick and I'll show you what we're doing with. I don't know how well you can see this, but that right there is the driver's, do driver's door door jam for what I believe is either 58, 59, or 60 Apollo convertible. So we haven't seen any stainless. Is that stainless on top of that piece right there, bud? Is that at the other end of that? Is that broke or where that is that where that ends? That's where it ends. That piece is still good then. Yeah. So is this? Never mind. What's uh? That doesn't make sense that that would end there to me. It seems like that would wrap around the back of the car. I don't know, but it ends right there. Hmm. I'll have to jump out and look at that before I get too carried away. I think that piece over there is good. Is that one is that one there by you tore up? No. Okay. We'll do a quick Google search and see what we got. Is any of that stainless around the back back there? Excuse me. Is it stainless around the back back there any good? No. That side's all, it's all bent up. Oh god! And it has a whole bunch of scrapes. Okay. And where it turns, it's like goes up and then turns. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see what we can get. We'll see what we can get pulled out of here. Unfortunately, at this point, we have no audio for any of our '59 Impala convertible footage. At this point, I'm just talking about the overall condition of it, condition of the car. You know, what's savable? Some of the stainless is present, but absolutely hammered. And like I said, it, somebody pushed this car in this ravine with a dozer, and it doesn't appear when it went in there, it had a frame underneath it. So the doghouse in the front end of the car is actually under the trunk, we later find out. But trying to determine what stainless is worth pulling to be fixed because all of it is bent except for two pieces and stainless is not our wheelhouse not something we typically deal with um i usually deal in pre-world war ii cars and the stainless is not um not something we typically deal and or remove so you'll see me struggling the video trying to figure out how to get it off and learn that i spent way too much time to try to remove it than what was necessary but that is part of it uh, here in a second you see me say a few choice words uh, that it's probably best there was an audio because here in just a second you'll uh, see me really screw up and I probably said a few choice words that doesn't need to be on YouTube but uh, it's about this point right here I realize I have screwed up I have uh, beat this piece of stainless to death with the saw. I thought I was well below it and I was not and did a lot of damage to it. And as little as a piece that it is, it's only about 12 inches long and there's one for each side. Those two pieces of stainless have been selling for about a thousand dollars on eBay. So you can imagine my frustration when I realized that uh, my carelessness has uh, damaged one pretty good because you know that's that's money right out of my pocket just from being too quick and careless so
I don't do a very good job of showing it in the video, but the surface of this has a crown to it and I have just smashed it shut where I was getting into it with the saw being careless and too quick. Pretty frustrated at this point, but it is what it is. Can't fix it. All I can do is uh, try to keep going and see what else we can get. Round two. Uh, somehow we managed to get back here. We got probably another three quarters of an inch of rain in the last two hours since we left with the first truck. We got, we managed to get back there and turn around and come out without stopping. Uh, and I don't know if you can tell in the video, but we're slightly going uphill and it is, uh, it's not two wheel drive Cummins friendly. Let's just say that. Um, yeah, we're going to try to get this, well, I don't know if you can see, get my finger cooperated right there. There's a, uh, it won't let me zoom. I tried to zoom you in. There's one square body. The other one we're going to try to get on this load is actually further around that corner. It still has a bed and stuff on it. The one you can see there 
so that's the one that somebody made a redneck flatbed out of that was uh quite comical had the side california style mirrors screwed to the bed of the floor with the tail light screwed to it for tail light bracket so uh, that's that truck that is not the one we're going to load i'm going to cut that one up here and that's a factory ac truck so we're going to just take that cab off of it the engine cradle and the rear end out of it and the rest of that truck's going to go scrap unless for some ungodly reason somebody wants a rotten three-quarter ton frame with no leaf springs two wheel drive at that um that one's going to stay here the one we're going to take home this time and still got the bed on it we're going to try to put a there's an old 350 rocket back there with the tranny on it we're going to try to put that in the bed our torch cart that's been left here uh we'll try to get it in the bed like an idiot i took that 71 or 72 home the other night thinking i was going to cut it up this weekend and that's hard to do when your torches are 40 miles away from it my torch hose isn't quite that long for some reason um so i'm gonna try to get the torches that motor in the back of it get it loaded and then hopefully we can get out of here again i'm not real optimistic it's going to happen something you know something about two inches of rain in a four hour period and a two wheel drive just seems like a bad idea but here we are so let's see what we can get into round two is winning uh we're getting our butts whipped this time that is just nothing but slop out here skid loader doesn't get enough traction with the ball tires this truck is stuck in park so uh trying to pick up the back of it without ruining the tailgate that's okay because uh, it, it doesn't want to roll this tire will roll the passenger front is flat it would roll if it had air but the air compressor is in the girlfriend's jeep so that's not an option at this point and the semi is not here to air it up not that we'd ever get the semi back here anyway so steven made the hike there you can see the truck man that is awkward right there steven walked back over there to get us some tools to hopefully take it out of park and then i could spin it around backwards and push it like a whirlwind again hopefully the back will roll and the good thing about doing it backwards like that is uh i don't have to worry about fighting steering and moving and being all crazy on me so we're gonna unhook the shifter linkage hopefully get it out of park and the, hopefully the back will roll both back tires are flat of course but that's better than uh the front ones not having one flat on the front because then it just wants to turn at least this way they're equally shitty and it makes it go straight so that's the plan i don't know that that's going to work but we'll see here in a minute as soon as he gets back he's about halfway back can you see that yeah little yellow dot little like minion uh, uh as soon as he gets back we'll get this apart hopefully we'll make some progress because we're not going to mess with hauling this pile home uh it sounds crazy but we're gonna take the cab off of this in the doghouse would you believe that man that is weird it's awkward that hood is still good and i believe it's a 73 hood which if you don't know what that means in 73 these trucks didn't have a crumple zone in the hood you've always seen a square body run around with a hood like this that's because they have horrible hinge designs that nobody takes care of and after 73, they put a crumple zone in that hood. And guess what? Bad hinges and a crumple zone, you get a taco hood. So that's a 73, no crumple zone hood, which is still good. So we'll be pulling that uh, in the body. Like I say, we're going to take the front cradle out of it, the 14 bolt out of the rear that somebody's already still leaf springs out of. Take those out and then all these little stainless pieces right there. And that's a factory AC truck as well. So some good parts there. Let's get this pile out of park and see if we can make this thing move all right shifter off popped it off right there can you see that popped it off the shift or off the uh, steering column got that rod pushed down i just noticed this is some indiana quality that valve cover is rusted through and the only thing that's holding it is the gunk on the inside that's indiana quality right there and people wonder why i go west to buy stuff all right, let's see what we can do to get this thing out of here.
that's obviously not working. So, uh, I'll make a bad call here. Instead of giving up like I should, I'm going to go get the truck that's over here and come in here and spin around and uh, try to get to where I can back underneath that again. If I had, you know, this is one of the scenarios where you spend a bunch of money on equipment so you can not bring it with you. This is one of those. Uh, just bought us a new Milwaukee air compressor to air up tires, obviously, and uh, didn't bring it. So it'd be really cool if I was smart enough to do that. Uh, it'd be really, really cool because then it would go straight. We don't have the keys to this truck, so Steven can't steer it. I don't want to tear up the steering column because it's worth a couple hundred bucks. So we're going to try to back in there first. If that doesn't work, I'll pull, pull forward, go try to make a loop around it, and then back up to it. Anyway, I am not going to continue to fight it, pushing it that far all the way over here to the trailer. So we're going to try to get backed up to it. Probably what we're going to accomplish is getting the truck stuck too, but we're going to give it a try. Steven's going to try to pull this forward. We're hopefully not going to get a mud shower.
this mud so awesome. That tailgate I doubt's latched, Austin, uh, Stephen. This tailgate was uh, super okay. It wasn't great, but it was an okay tailgate for for this era. But uh, yeah, that happened. So that's awesome. Yeah. I'm real happy about that. Once it happened once, it didn't matter no more. I didn't care if it happened anymore because at that point it was junk. I mean, it wasn't a great tailgate. It's it's far from great, but I have a rust-free truck from Kansas that has no tailgate. And uh, now this one is not even probably really usable because if you don't bend the bed, the floor, to match your tailgate, she ain't gonna work no more. We'll get her strapped down, get out of here. That's what I was saying. I don't know if you guys heard that in the last video, or not the last video, one of the videos. This stuff is horrible on trailer floors. And uh, these things have hold so much junk, as you can tell, this trailer is not new by no means. Uh, that just destroys them. So once this is done, maybe we'll get some new deck on the trailer. I don't know, we'll see what happens. So let's we'll see if we can get out of here. Load it up strap down let's see if we can get out of this mess it's gonna be interesting the initial try is a negative Absolute mess. That's fantastic. Yuck. Thank God for po uh, pause units, right? I am glad we got them aggressive tires in there. Otherwise, we would have been hosed. Good Lord. Speaking of hose, I need to hose the trailer off. Look at that. She's moving some material. Good grief. That's crazy. Yep, what a mess.